tuning in to the Entrepreneur Life Show with your host, Rose of McDonald Bookkeeping Services and Shamara Walker of SWHR Consulting. We bring real issues and resources to business owners and entrepreneurs, local and celebrity guests sharing their journey into entrepreneurship. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hey there, hey, hey, what's up? Welcome Hello, back. Hello, everybody. Welcome, our listeners. We are back to another day in the life of an entrepreneur where we stream simultaneously on several different podcasts on social media, Facebook, and YouTube. So be sure you subscribe. Subscribe. Over here. Subscribe, <laughs> subscribe to our YouTube channel. And so we'd like to say we share great guests with you that will share their journey into entrepreneurship so you can get to connect with them ask questions and maybe use these resources for your day-to-day life so we would first like to start off by saying thank you to our sponsor marketing out the box marketing out the box media so if you want to get your business right and you want to become visible and sustainable check out sean maddox with marketing out the box box.com and i am your host rose from mcdonald bookkeeping services and i am hello, hello everyone <laughs> and i am shamara the co-host with swhr consulting and we are super super duper excited to have our guest on the show today he is Leon. I know you guys know who he is, and we're super excited to have him on the show. So Leon is an actor, producer, musician, singer, Grammy-nominated um, individual. He, uh, you know, you, you, you guys know who he is. You know, he's done so many different things. He's been on TV and film. Um, so too much to account for. Cool Runnings, The Five Heartbeats. Stay back. <laughs> Little Richard and so many amazing entertaining genres. So we are so excited to have him be on the show today. And he's going to tell you all about him, what he's doing now, what, you know, what's up and coming in his world, and just to get to know him a little bit more. So welcome, yeah. welcome. You're bringing him on the show. Woo! Hey, yes. Hey, hey, hey. Hi, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. We so appreciate you. We so appreciate you just accepting our offer to come on the show. Okay. <laughs> so I'm, I would happy, like to- I'm happy to be here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so nervous. Well, I'm so nervous. I'm right here. I'm like already <laughs> rose. Okay. Well, I got my hair done yesterday just to make sure. So we got our hair done. Well, <laughs> okay. well I appreciate that. I really do. <laughs> okay, so I would like to start off by asking. So, of course, um, I didn't really realize that actually you you you've always sang, you know. So, and or in a band. So when I was kind of researching you, and you had a band, and so I thought, how did you? I, I want to get into the acting, but how did the music start? Because of singing, because you obviously you have played some great characters after some great icon. Mm-hmm. So was that something you'd always wanted to do? Um, you know, it's something that kind of gravitated to me when I was very young. Um, I snuck into an Elvis Presley movie and I was like, wow, this dude, man, he gets to sing. <laughs> he gets to dance, he gets to kiss the pretty ladies. That's the kind of job I want to do. <laughs> so, <laughs> So I, I kind of always had it in me, and, uh, and the first production I ever did was a rock and roll revival when I was in um, uh-huh. fifth grade. And so I guess it, you know, it just kind of followed me around. As far as singing is concerned, um, when I became 
um, started to become a well-known actor, um, I would start host a lot of music festivals and um, definitely the biggest reggae festivals like Reggae Sunsplash and Reggae yeah, yeah. Sting, Sting in Japan and every place. And so, you know, I've been know a lot of artists and, you know, backstage we'd be singing a cappella and, you know, and whatever. And they, yeah. they, they would encourage me. They would be like, you know, you should sing, you know, you should, and you don't have to, but you don't need to, but, you know, you're good enough and you want to, you should do it. So I want to joining this band called the Young Lions in New York, which is a bunch of musicians that got together that played uh -huh. like bands like Sting and UB40. And oh, wow. Yeah. The Bruce Springsteen. And, <laughs> and um, we just started, you know, playing around. We started getting popular, but um, I wanted to do original music. Uh -huh. And they were doing, you know, covers. And I was like, you know, right. I want to do my own thing. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah. And then, um, you know, we started playing my band, The Peoples, and then you know, tell people I had to pull a David Ruffin on them. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And, call, and call the band Leon and the Peoples because uh, we got better shows that way. <laughs> so, I mean, so when you, um, when you first, I'd say, got the part or um, as like just in, you know, the five heartbeats and temptation, I mean, all these singing parts, were you ex excited about that because you that was really one of your passion singing did you feel that you had to was it difficult because you're really playing the character of some amazing icons i would have been was really nervous like could you even though you could sing, those, are, those are major people those are major characters um you know it's 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 different when you're in it you know you have to realize for one this is what i train to do so, you know, I'm well prepared and equipped to take on these roles because yeah. this is like, it's like a, it's like a runner who trains to, to be in the Olympics. And when he gets, you know, he, when, the, when that gun goes off, it's like, this is what it's all about. So, you know, so this is, this is where I'm supposed to be as far as I'm concerned. So, um, for me, it becomes more of a challenge of, you know, especially if you play someone who actually walked and talked on this earth, mm -hmm. you owe it to the people that know him, to his family, um, to do him right, you know, to at least capture his essence of who that person was. And so for me, that's where I would feel the pressure. I feel mm -hmm. that pressure of, you know, portraying a role and, and bringing this person to life in a way that, you know, didn't dishonor them. So could you tell us a little bit about your, you know, your, your career in terms of acting? Like, how did you actually get started? Like, where did that, you know, how did, how did you become who you are today? <laughs> Do you remember your first casting call? Let's say that. <laughs> um, yeah, I remember, I remember all those things, but um, it really started for me. Um, I was an all everything basketball player out of New York. And so I, I for some reason, I only went, took scholarship offers from California and mm -hmm. I went to Loyola Marymount. University. Oh, yeah. And a graduate film student, you know, in the spring just chased me down and, you know, and, and begged me to be in this movie. And I was just like, well, why don't you get somebody in the theater arts department? I'm sure they would love to be. <laughs> and he's like, no, I've been watching you. Um, I have a good eye. There's something about you. You're going to be in the movies one day and I want to be the first person to do it. So, wow. you know, I try anything once if it's safe. And so, you know, I, di I did it and I had an experience that we all had. I was very comfortable um, when I was on set. I felt like, um, you know, like this is where I was supposed to be. So kind of changed my major, became a theater arts major and, and um, started studying. So what was the first role that you actually got as an actor? Do you remember? <laughs> um, well, <laughs> It's two part. I mean, the first role I actually ever got um, as um, that I was casted in, that I went through the traditional process, uh -huh. would be um, um, an ABC afternoon special. Oh, <laughs> yeah, with, with Ralph Macchio. Oh, wow. Um, Real. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that whole casting situation. And, um, and then um, I think the, uh, but the first time I ever, um, got into uh, <laughs> films, able to get my SAG card and everything. I was um, this guy I knew, Corky Ford actually was a working actor, one of the few black working actors around. And, uh, mm -hmm. He came by this photography studio and we got to become friendly and he said that um, you know, he wanted me to um, 
he wanted to meet his agent one day, whatever, and so and so. But anyway, he was doing this musical, this high school basketball musical for PBS. And he came to me and said, they cast this actor that um, to play basketball, and he can't play a lick of basketball. <laughs> so they hook up with somebody, and he says, I know. <laughs> I says, I know. I said, I told him I got the perfect guy. So you got to come meet the producers, like, right away. So I went down there, I talked to the producers, and they were like, okay, cool, well, listen, I hope you don't mind, but we don't want to take a chance because we took a chance last time with the kids. So could you shoot around a little bit? So I went and, you know, shot around, hit a couple of jump shots. And then I threw the ball off the backboard and I caught it behind my head and dunked it. <laughs> <laughs> and they, just ran, they, just, they just ran out and gave me a contract right there. <laughs> so, my so my basketball came in handy in getting my career started. <laughs> That's awesome. I want to talk about full runnings. Your accent. <laughs> that was my question, but go ahead. <laughs> so one was, okay, your accent. Did you have to really practice that? And did you guys, did you really bobsled? Did you really do the, you know, the stunt part? Or were there like, you know, people who did that? Did you really have to participate? Okay, so I would say before you answer that question, I just wanted to let you know that that's the first introduction to you for me, because I am actually from the Caribbean, from the islands. And so when we had an opportunity to see somebody from the island, you know, representing islanders and, um, you know, it was just very inspirational for me and just knowing that there's a way out, right? Um, and so it was just, it was, it's, it's really nice to just be able to meet you, to be honest. Um, so yeah, please tell us more. Okay. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm glad that um, it had that kind of influence on you. I really am. I mean, every time you when you make a movie, you hope that you that, that it resonates with people, that it touches someone in a certain way. And that mm -hmm. movie in particular touched people in so many ways. Um, I'll answer your question in a second, but just to go off to what she said, you know, yeah. Dougie Doug, who play, played Sank in the movie with me, we were inducted into the um, Canadian <laughs> Sports Hall of Fame. And they actually did a screening at a theater of Cool Runnings. They were doing two screenings of it. And the lines were around the block. Now, these are people who have seen the movie so many times, have it in their home, and they're still lining up to see this movie. Yes. And people are telling stories. One girl, how she moved to Calgary because, you know, from um, Vienna, because she saw the movie and wanted to be, you know, in Calgary because where, where Cool Runnings was. Um, one kid, um, his father died and he watched Cool Runnings for 30 straight days. Oh, uh, wow. To get, oh, tell me. To get over it. And um, yeah, it was just so many amazing stories. It was amazing. Um, so, okay, as far as the accent's concerned, the accent um, was really hard because that wasn't, um, it, wasn't <laughs> a true, it wasn't a true Jamaican accent. Right. Um, what happened is that, um, you know, it's a, it was a, it's a Disney movie. So, you know, <laughs> I was speaking, uh, you know, as authentic as possible. You know, it, luckily, um, Malik Yoba's character, Yul Brennan, was able to do that because he was from the streets. Uh -huh. um, and so Junior Bevel was, you know, an upscale youth. So <laughs> he got away with it. But we, I kept getting notes from the studio saying, listen, uh, you, you can't talk that way. Um, we don't understand you. They're not going to understand you. <laughs> he says, they, they, they actually got a note one time because I was a lead character. <laughs> we want you to sound like a, um, a black Aladdin. <laughs> what? <laughs> and I'm like. That's a different accent than a Jamaican accent. Excuse me. I know. That. <laughs> but you know, Aladdin was a big hit for them. So they're like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. How can how can we weave this into this Jamaican accent? You know, so right? <laughs> so. How disrespectful! They won't even talk like that. Eh? When they're supposed to talk like this, they have the two different accent now. Yes, okay. exactly. So you know, <laughs> that's the whole thing, you know. And they're like, "We're not going to have subtitles." I'm telling you. So I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> that's so. that's pretty anyway, we had, we had a, there was a dialect coach on set all the time to make sure that. We were speaking in a way in which, you know, Americans and, and others would understand us. Would yeah. understand. <laughs> Completely yeah. understand. Yeah. So I okay, so I wanted to talk about the um the music where Leon and the Peoples. 
And so I, I noticed that you do quite a bit of festivals and stuff. And maybe a lot of people are like, I didn't know that. And so mm-hmm. is it something that had just really been your passion more than anything, you think? Um, and, you know, acting just came to you, but singing is your thing? Um, you know, I mean, I think I love them equally. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I love to do them all together simultaneously, actually. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just different. You know, when I'm acting, which I love to do, mm-hmm. I'm breathing life into a character that a writer wrote right. and, telling, and telling a story. I'm a storyteller. And so, but when I'm singing with my band, well, then those I'm, I'm singing songs that I want to sing. These are my songs. That's what I want to present. So it's different, you know, it's just, it's just an, it's just an all around thing. You know, I'm playing a character and I'm also myself when I'm on stage, that depending on what I mean, I enjoy them both actually. So um, I don't know, I'm assuming this may or may not have happened, but I've heard this before, is you can play a role and people like us, I call us civilians because we're not actors. They might take the role that if you were just acting, like you really did, you know, and waiting to exhale, you're not, not weren't the nicest guy. So do you find that people on the screen sometimes they'll think, look, it was just a character and give you a hard time? Oh yeah. I mean, there's, there's people that, you know, <laughs> they think the characters that I play are real people. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and sometimes mad at me or have an opinion about me and, you know, to be honest with you, I'm flattered by it, you know what I mean? Because, you know, if, if they think so much of my performance that they think that I'm real, you know, I'm <laughs> like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't really do that to her. Um, <laughs> 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 Leon, not Russell, thank you. <laughs> so I'd like to know if you have any particular movie that you say was was closest to your heart that was resembles more like you that you that you play a character hmm. no not really i mean maybe maybe um this role this movie called um the price of kissing oh you know what yeah i i, I didn't know about that until i started um researching you so i had to go and look at it Mm, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, playing a, a bouncer in a club who really wants to be a reggae singer and, you know, and having, unconven- having unconventional relationships. And yeah, that's me. <laughs> it, it seems like you, you resonate with the Caribbean culture quite a lot. <laughs> well, I lived, in, I lived in Jamaica about three to four months out of the year for like 10 years straight. Really? Yeah. So. So tell us all about that experience. That's how, that's how they that's how that's how they found me for Cool Runnings because when they went to Jamaica, <laughs> everybody was saying Leon, Leon, Leon. <laughs> you know, it would be great to have uh, a, another one come back, Cool Runnings, to see where they're at, and maybe they like have kids or something, or they're going to pick up kids from the island. You know, <laughs> really, I mean, has that been ever a thought? Maybe like, you know? yeah, you know, listen, it should have been a cool runnings two and three already because um, every Olympics we should add another cool running. So, yeah, I agree. I agree. You know, to realize that um, the catalyst of that movie was Dawn Steele, um, the great um, executive, at, female executive, and she um, she passed away. And so, um, you know, she had a lot, she had a great deal of ownership of the movie. And so, he never really, you know, f- followed up and did, you know, another one. Like, look at Mighty Ducks. Mighty Ducks is like Mighty Ducks 5. Yes. That is, yeah. my, that is Mighty movie. Ducks series. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, you know, yeah. But, but you, you also know, you know, we don't even need to go there for any other kind of reasons for that. <laughs> <laughs> So where does your inspiration come from? Like when you're with your band and are, are you writing it all yourself? And like, love is a yeah, beautiful yeah, thing. Yeah, me and my writing. Yeah, band. like love is a beautiful thing. Like, <laughs> that, you know, wrote yourself or, you know, because t- typically a lot of people have ghost writers too, so. Yeah. No, 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 comes. no, there's no ghost writers here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and love is a beautiful thing. Yeah, that's, you know, that's the type of music that I write, you know, so um, that's probably right in, right in my, um, 
to be of the type of music that I write. But you know, I write all type of things. You know, all type of music depending on what I'm feeling. And, um, depends on the theme of the record. You know, I mean, this last record was "Love Is a Beautiful Thing," so all the songs on there were some aspects of love. You know, whether good or bad. You know, or you know. So it's um, it just depends. So it's all a story. At the other day. Do you feel like your fans that, you know, really know you as an actor really embrace you as um, a singer as well? Do they, you know, or do they feel like, hey, you should just focus on this one thing? <laughs> or the other? <laughs> um, no, I mean, I think that um, I think that my fans of my acting um, are very welcoming of my singing. I mean, the only time they may not is if it's because they didn't know. <laughs> You know, but once once they find out, it's like, you know, even when I've, I've been on tour and I make, um, I've been on several tours with an artist named Barris Hammond. And, uh, I, you know, sometimes I make a surprise, you know, appearance on tour, you know, and ah. they, they, won't, they won't know. And people at first when I come out and then when they see it's me, they just, you know, cameras <laughs> everywhere, they're going nuts, they're going crazy. And I think I have a, a bit of an advantage because uh-huh. I think that, if you were to think of actors that you'd want to go see sing or that could sing, I think I'd probably be kind of at the top of the list or somewhere near there. So I think people are kind of welcoming that. Like they, they'd want to see me sing because of my performance right. in movies. Yeah, so. Because so, you're multi-talented. <laughs> so um, is there anything that you, now that you've, I think, you know, you've probably made it, I mean, you, you're amazing. So is there anything where you would look back and think that you would have done differently now, knowing what you know now? Because I know that your daughter is beautiful. I mean, her parents are beautiful. And so she could model, she could act. I mean, I mean, she obviously gets her talents from her mom and her dad. So is there anything that now you look and say, hmm, now if I were her, her then, what I would do differently, you know, getting into the industry or tell anybody in general? Well, of course. I mean, I mean, I think, you know, they, there's a, the expression, hindsight is a bitch. So, you know, you, you, you always can look back and think about decisions that were made at the time. And they were made for good reasons at the time. But those, yeah. you know, they, those, those reasons no longer exist. So mm-hmm. sometimes the decisions you made, um, you might make all over again, but you wish that the circumstances were different. Right. right. And, you know, and, and also the, the industry is so much different now than mm-hmm. when it first started. So, yeah, of course there'd be things I do differently. I mean, because, <laughs> I mean, I often said, I was just talking to a friend of mine, another actor, and you know, I was just saying, man, I'd love to start over again. Oh, man, it's like, <laughs> I'd, have a, I'd have a feel that. Because <laughs> there's so many, so many more opportunities. Do you feel that you've ever been typecast? Because I hear that that can happen. That you really have to be particular of your roles. That people don't get you stuck in one genre. Right. Yeah, I think that if you look at my resume, um, I have a pretty wide variety of roles. Right. Um, you know, the thing is that I can change a lot of different things on me. Um, my face is kind of a hard one. <laughs> so, so, you know, you, you have to think that, um, you know, you have to, people have to imagine you, unless you're making your own movie or a TV show, yeah. people yeah. have to imagine you being that person. And so, if you, have, you know, you have to have some way of showing them, either through your past work or an audition or anything else that you might do. But um, at the end of the day, you know, if someone deems me to look a certain way, it's going to be hard for them not to see me look that way. You know, mm-hmm. and you, have to, you can you just have to show them. But I think you know, I've um, you know I've I've been a lot of different things. I've been villainous, and I've been lover boy. I've been you know, I've been a whole bunch of different things, and I'm going to be a whole bunch of different things even more. You know, so is there a character you'd like to play that you haven't played yet? Sure, <laughs> lots of them. Um, so you know with you just doing so many different things you know acting you're a singer i mean that obviously is also part of like your entrepreneurship journey right um through your career and so what piece of advice would you give to someone that is in your industry you know 
um, as they try as they try to get to the, the level that you are on in terms of understanding the business side of getting to that point. Because of course, anyone can act, anyone can sing, but what? there's also that you know that part of being able to maintain you as a business because you're selling yourself uh, in order to continue to grow. Well, you know, the most important thing is to realize that this is a business. And although right. it, is, it is the arts and it's what you should um, concentrate on because if you don't, you know, if you're not able to grasp the art of it, you're probably not going to have a career. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, you maintain doing the work that you can to be the best you can, but realize that everything is a stepping stone. Everything is, you know, a building to the next thing so that you can sustain yourself. And there's going to be peaks and valleys and you're going to have to sustain them. Um, if you're going to, if you want to, you know, make this your career, um, if you want to be able to do this, you know, for decades and decades, and as you change, as your face change, as the industry changes, you know, the one thing hopefully will be consistent will be right. you working. Right. <laughs> so, um, I think that, um, yeah, it's very important to um, know the business and know that you're getting into a business. But I think right. at first, when you're first getting into this business, you need to be an artist. You mm -hmm. need to be good because that's what they're looking for. And once you, once you get your foot in the door and you're actually working, then, you know, look at it as a business. <clears throat> but remember, you know, being good is like pretty much your best way of getting in, I think. <laughs> so you find, are you still having to continually like educate yourself and taking like you know singing and acting classes or any type of mentorship that because i would think that as times change an actor is always having to rebrand itself and change you know what i'm saying so um i was i would assume that you know that you're always like doing something different to better your skills better what you have people see you differently um yeah i think it's very important um you know, I think you get to the point um, where I'm at and, you know, and some of my peers are, are where I get to, um, I get to sharpen my skills mm -hmm. and work on things and also get paid very well at the same time. Right, right, yeah. Because like, what I prefer to do is go back and do theater. So, <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, and luckily, luckily enough, I'm a draw in the theater world. So I get paid to actually keep, keep sharp so i feel blessed that that's a, that's something i can do and plus i love the stage i mean if it was up to me i'd be on stage all the time you know and of course you are much harder because i think you get one try one like you, you when you're on stage that's it not like acting <laughs> let's, okay let's do that again you know right yeah, but, but that's but that's the way it's supposed to be that's the way you learn when you when you're learning acting you're studying acting there's no take two because you're learning, you're learning to be on stage. Uh -huh. You're learning to break down your character and who your character is on this journey. And, and you know, you go on each night and each night is different. You may say a line different. Your, your co-stars may act different, which makes it different from night to night and you find different things. And each audience is different. You know, some audiences are really live and some aren't. Um, it's just each night is a different night and, it's, and yet you're telling the same story, but it's resonating a different way each night. And so it's a beautiful thing. So, um, you know, as you were getting your career started, was there any particular actor or singer that kind of inspired you to continue to, you know, move forward and, you know, reach out, get catch your dreams um, as you continue to, you know, grow in your career? Do you mean um, someone that I actually had, a, um, that I actually yeah, like, a relationship yeah, with? Yeah, not necessarily new, but, you know, had the opportunity to to watch and learn from them and then, you know, use that as a way to kind of hone in on your skill set and then maybe being able to meet them t t today <laughs> or, you know, as when you became famous. No, I can't say there is. You know, I mean, I'd say in the singing world, it would probably be um, Barris Hammond. You know, because I've, I've been around him a lot in the recording studio. He produced my first single. Mm -hmm. um, he, has a sing he has a record that he um, produced and wrote on his latest, latest album. Um, yeah, and I've been around him so much. And he's such a uh, perfectionist. And he's so great. 
and his, his fan base is ridiculous. And so watching him every night um, is like being in school, you know. Um, same thing with my friends on um, Morgan Heritage, you know, and just you know, just being around them, watching their professionalism um, on stage is you know, is always something to learn from. So when you were singing in like The Temptations and you know uh, other you know, movies that you've been in, were you able to at any time, because you obviously can sing, this is what you, you don't just sing for the movies, you sing as part of your, because that, that's what you do, entertainment, that's part of what you do. Mm -hmm. um, were you were you able to like do your own thing? Because I know, of course, they, you know, you, I'm sure you have the writers, and this is how they want it, and you know, the producers, how they want it to look, but because this is you, and I'm sure you can feel it, you got to like ad lib a bit, like kind of do your own thing on the stage, while being on camera, or was it strictly, no, this is how we want it to look, how we want it to be? Oh, you mean the choreography? Yeah, yeah. That and just the singing piece and everything, just to be able to express your your true self through the character. <laughs> okay, so as far as the, the choreography is concerned, um, you know, all the things you just see the Temptations do in sync, you know, that was, um, you know, that was what the Temptations did. So we were, we were basically learning the steps of the Temptations. For me, individually, you know, I got to do my own thing, but my own thing was, you know, from my, my studying of David Ruffin, mm -hmm. you know, hand gestures yeah. and things like that. And then, um, and then as you see, I, one of my favorite scenes is when we um, appear on the Ed Sullivan show, singing My Girl. Oh, uh, yes. You know, all, you know, all <laughs> those moves like that, we slide and do the slide back and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, like that, you know, that's them, but it's, it, it's, it was fly though. <laughs> <laughs> how, how difficult was it or is it when you're having to learn somebody else's character and like you were saying just hand gestures body movements facial right. expression i mean did that was that difficult did it take a long time to get that just because you like you said earlier you really want to do that part justice well yeah i mean it just depends on how you approach your roles you know like for the temptations for example um, I'm a bit of a method actor when I have an opportunity to be. So, you know, I was in character the entire time, you know, all through rehearsals mm -hmm. until the end of the movie. You know, I mean, I only answered to David and never answered to Lee. Hmm. Oh, just, wow. That's just the way it was. And so I, um, you know, for me, I had all the TVs in my house and everything. It was just old footage of David Ruffin playing all the time. Wow. You know, every time I saw him. So I was just sitting there, it was just, you know, it just became second nature to me into what, you know, some of the things we would do. And then I would improvise and do it in my own style, of course. Uh -huh. um, but, um, yeah, that's it. You know, I think that if you, in acting and you're telling a story, if you can convince the audience that you are that person from the very first time they see you, you can take them anywhere. You know, they go with you anywhere once they believe you're that character. And so that's what I really concentrate when I do my work is that, the first time you see me, you have no doubt who I am, you know. Um, same thing happens when I was preparing for Cool Runnings. When I was preparing for Cool Runnings, I had pictures of, um, you know, all these sprinters and, and you know, all around my house and stuff like that because I wanted to make sure that my body looked like their body, uh -huh. that you didn't doubt when you saw me yeah. when I was an Olympic sprinter. Right, right. And, you know, and the thing is now, I think it's... um. It's harder than it used to be. You know, if you look at old movies, you'll look at, you know, some of our great stars, you know, um, would play different roles, play athletic roles like that. And you can clearly see they didn't have an athletic body. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, but now with the internet and social media and stuff, right. everyone, including your grandmother, knows what a basketball player looks yeah, like. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, you just can't get out there anymore and just like do something. You know, it's like you got to, you, you got to really be, you got to really be that person or have that, or at least have that skill because people know what it looks like, you know? I mean, so, um, yeah, you got to put the work in. So how hard is it to break character? Because I've heard, you know, like stories where actors become those characters and then have psychological problems after, or, you know, like have mental issues after the fact. Um, it's particular, particularly the actor that did Batman, uh, Joker in the Batman movie. So, you know, like how, like how do you break from that? Well. <laughs> <laughs> because it's true, doesn't it have 
happened. Okay. All I, like, all I have to that. say to those actors is, um, <clears throat> thing is, Lawrence Olivier said, son, it's just acting. Okay. <laughs> like, like, don't get it twisted. You don't need to affect the rest of your life and your and your loved ones because right. you're playing a role. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, so that's one thing. I think that uh, <clears throat> sometimes when you're playing a role, you know, yeah, I mean, depends on what the role is and how far the role is from you and how much you had to delve into it. But I find it pretty easy to, you know, once we wrap to, uh, you know, get back to me and Liam. <laughs> <laughs> How is it working with Robert Townsend? He just seems to have his hands in a bit of everything. And he, I mean, an amazing eye for um, the, the best movies. I mean, I and, and they all say something. Kind of reminds me of, um, what's his name? The other, um, I, I, I just forgot his name, but with the big glasses. Um, right. They, yes. You know, they know how to tell a story. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and it really resonates. You know, um, how's it working with, with him? Um, love, love working with Robert. And I hope we can do it again. You know, um, we did the Five Heartbeats together. We did a Little Richard together. We did a wonderful um, web series that won awards. You should see it called um, Diary of a Single Mom. Hmm. It's very good. Oh. There's a lot of really good people in it. And, um, yeah, I mean, he's, you know, he's a, um, he's a storyteller. And um, he's a master of what he does. Um, and I always hope and wish to see him, you know, do the biggest of things because I think he deserves it. He's a, I recently saw his one man show up in um, the Bay Area. And, uh, and he was just amazing, just telling stories of his youth. And, and, um, and if any of you haven't seen the, um, the documentary he did last year called The Making of the Five Heartbeats, you should see I didn't hear that. What was that? If any of you haven't seen the documentary that he made last year, they got nominated for an image image award called "The Making of the Five Heartbeats." Really? Okay. Oh. Yeah, you should see it. It's, it tells a story from him as a little child of when he came up with the idea to do the movie and all the struggles and casting wow. and yeah, you should wow. see it. It's really, it's really, really, really good. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, I didn't want to interrupt you. <laughs> no, you're fine. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So, um, so now that you know, are are you going to be? Um, if, if we want to see where you'll be performing anytime coming up, I'm in Vegas, and I see you do a lot. It seems like east on the east coast, or because I would love to see you at some see you do your thing at some festivals and stuff like that. I mean, no, no, listen, um, we've played Vegas a few times and I look forward to coming out there again. You know, the, the one thing there's two, there's two factors. One, we have a pandemic still right. plaguing this country. So, you know, as far as live performances are concerned, there's still, you know, there's no clear sight in, ahead of us that we know is going to happen. Mm -hmm. and, and so we don't know what festivals are even going to even take place. It just, oh, yeah. just, just canceled Coachella for the second time. And so we right. don't really know. Um, if they do book festivals and stuff, then I hope that we get booked to play some of them out there. I'd love that. Um, yeah. In regards to like work in the acting world, it, it's the same situation, huh? Not being able to maybe do the same, you know, be able to put, get uh, new movies and stuff going because of the pandemic or how are you guys well, able no, to work through that? No, not now. We're, we're back. All the series of filming, uh, movies are being made. Yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Good, because I'm like, I can't watch this 20 yeah. times anymore. <laughs> I need some no, new no. movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, definitely. Yeah, no, there's plenty of new stuff coming, trust me. There's, there's a lot of COVID restrictions, but plenty of new things, yeah, for sure. Okay. <laughs> Maybe because I'm older, I find that a lot in today's, not just today's music, but even in when I watch things on TV, um, they don't capture me. And I, it could be my age. They don't capture me. And um, it's kind of like the, I don't know, the actors or the performers, they're here and then they're gone. Mm -hmm. Rather than, you know, movies that I've watched when I was, a, you know, even a teenager and actors, the stories were so different that you still follow them today, no matter what they're doing. 
Mm-hmm. So um, do you think there's been a big change in the industry that causes that? Because you can, for like my kids, you know, I'm, I'm older, but my kids are in their 20s. They'll be like, oh, mom, did you hear that song? I'm like, that, that, that song been out. You know what I'm saying? So they're even going back, you know, a lot of the older songs and older groups that they're singing, that they seem to resonate with more than even current day. You know what I'm saying? And music and acting and actors. And it's like, oh, they, they've, been, they've been in the industry and they think it's a new actor. You right. Know? So do you think it's, a, it's just such a big change that people are losing the value of real entertainment and storytelling? You just not, it's not the same. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say that. Um, I just say that there's so much more now mm-hmm. that whenever there's more of anything, there's always going to be more that's not good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, the reason why we, <laughs> the reason why we give awards or give great reviews or talk about certain shows because they're better than the norm, <laughs> right. Right. right? So they, you know, they rise above the norm, and so um, because there's so much out there. Um, unlike before, there wasn't that much out there. Yeah. You yeah. know, back in the days when, you know, the Five Heartbeats and New Jack City and yeah. The Right Thing came out above the river, like, they were like events for us. We didn't, you know, we didn't have a lot of like black movies that we were going to remember and, you know, that were going to be there. And, you know, and so, and I think it, and I think it, and I think it went on you know, to waiting to exhale and, and oh. the best man and, you know, and, and, and movies that, right. you know, that really resonated with us because we didn't have that much mm-hmm. out there. And so we clung to those stories and we loved them. And now, you know, with so much out there, you know, you're gonna see a bunch of things that aren't really that good, they're made for just mm-hmm. now, or they're made with, you know, talent that you don't recognize because, you know, this is, you know, this is, they're just starting out or, or they're in things that you don't watch, you know? Right. And so, yeah. Just There's me. no exclusivity anymore. Everything is just out there. It's so accessible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, without a doubt. Too accessible. Yeah. <laughs> well, we definitely look forward to seeing you and a lot of other future stuff. I know I do. And there's some people that are just enjoying you on our chat line, leaving you comments that they just, I don't know if you see those or not, but that you are just an amazing, amazing person. How we appreciate you being on our show and taking part. And, Thank um, you. I appreciate you saying that. It's very nice of you. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, we really do appreciate you. Like I said, I'm like, oh, so excited. <laughs> I so, can't. So, so before you before you go, because we don't want to take up too long, you know, maybe you can give us that old cool running uh, accent, or maybe like give us a little tune, maybe a little like <laughs> something for our listeners. Well, you know oh. what? I would, but I, you know, there's certain things that I do and don't do. Okay. <laughs> One of the things is I don't repeat my lines. Oh, okay. Because you know why? I probably won't do them justice because I don't watch my movies. <laughs> oh, okay. I like that. Yes, I like that too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but Rose, we have to show his website. Let's do some of that before we let him go. Just a little bit of that. If you don't mind. If you don't mind. <laughs> I, and, and, what, would you, what would you like me to do? We <laughs> wanted to show your website off a bit and, um, okay. you know, get, so you know I, tell us a little bit more about, you know, your what what you're working on and how they can get a hold of you if they wanted to partner with you with anything. I don't know. <laughs> well, musically, you can always go to my band's website, which is Leon and the Peoples. That's Peoples with an S, Leon and the Peoples dot net. Um, my personal website is um, justleon.com, which is what they're showing you right now. Probably needs a little updating. Um. <laughs> I'm gonna get a shirt, by the way. But that's I'm. I actually last night I was on here and I said I'm gonna get this one right here. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, definitely. It comes in different colors too, so let me know. <laughs> and um, yeah, and you know I'm very active on Instagram, which is um, www.justleon which is W-W-W-J-U-S-T-L-E-O-N. I put three W's in front because someone took Just Leon and tried to make me pay for it. So, you know, I figured. <laughs> Throw a few W's on there and keep it moving. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's it. Yeah, Leon um, on Facebook, every place else. You know, just, you can hit me any place you want. As far as what I'm doing now, um, 
You know, I just been I just been working. Um, did a movie that wound up being the number one movie for Hallmark, a Christmas movie over the Christmas holiday, called "The Time to Come Home for Christmas," an executive produced by Blake Shelton. I just wrapped last week um, my work on a, um, a TV series, season two of "City on a Hill," okay. um, which is on Showtime, which premieres um, March twenty eighth, um, and yeah. And, you know, deciding what I'm going to do next. Well, thank you so much, sir. Mr. Lee, and I like just Leon. Um, <laughs> again, for giving us the opportunity. Um, and we are going to obviously see you again on the wide screen, small screen, because you're, just, you're amazing. Um, as always, not because you're here, because I just, I just, I just think you are. I know you are, and our guests are going to love. Amazing yeah. actor. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll let you know, enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> thank you for being part you of our too. show. Keep doing what you're doing and um, keep it positive, right? And stay safe, okay? Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Right. Bye. Bye. What did you think about that interview? <laughs> you guys love it? He's such a chill person. He's just like laid back. Yeah, just I love it. It's like, oh my gosh. Um, we are so happy that you guys tuned in. And for everybody who is listening, wherever you are, thank you. Please, you know, subscribe. Yes, subscribe to our, our YouTube channel. Um, make sure you follow us on social media. Go to our page, the entrepreneur life dot show, entrepreneur life dot show to find us wherever we are on all of the different podcast platforms. We have some really other great guests coming up. Um, we're really booked and we're still looking for um, other great guests to share with you guys, right, Shamar? Just like, yes, anyway. yes, 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 guys. If you are interested in being a part of our show and you have something to say, something to offer our audience, you know, we would love to have you be a part of our show. Um, we also are going to start doing at the end of our show some quick tips. Um, I know that we focused um, a lot on sharing the stories of or careers of people that we bring on the show, but we also want to give you guys some tidbits about a little bit about what we do. I mean, as, as you guys know, Rose does accounting and I do HR, but we also want to share some knowledge um, towards the end of the show so that you guys can take that away and use it in the future. So on our next show, we'll have a little bit of quick tips at the end, and hopefully that is helpful for you and your business. Yeah. So subscribe, Entrepreneur Life Not Show on our YouTube channel. If you need to find out where we are, just go to our page, Entrepreneur Life Dot Show, and you will find all the podcast platforms we are on our YouTube channel. Um, you will see all the other great guests we've had on um, Shantae Moore, Darren Henson. Um, oh gosh. Robert Rashar. <laughs> I forgot his shirt for you ladies. Like, I know. You have to go back and watch that because I think like yes. everybody was like, yes. drooling yes. when that shirt came off. <laughs> A lot of great interviews as well as, you know, some really great um, businesses, entrepreneurs on there that's going to share a lot of information with you. So make sure, don't miss out, subscribe, be a great follower. And we will see you um, on our next show. Check out our calendar. Check out our calendar. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye.